Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with another weekly schlog here from Highland Cycles. We got Angry Zach over there. Leander just went running and hiding after giving me not a heart attack, but definitely a skip of the heart because she told me that my new dirt bike was in at Davis and it was just a joke. It's not. <laughs> I totally believed her because she just had a straight face. Anyway, welcome to our little shop vlog here in Western Colorado where we show you all kinds of cool dirt bike stuff and do kinds, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, I'm gonna start this day with some mail time, so if you guys wanna join me, stick with it. Here we go. Alright guys, so mail time today. I am so very thankful. I got a couple things to show you. Alright, first of all, Rich Pierce got an extra one of these. Uh, his wife ordered it and they sent him more than they should have. So he brought me one, Make, Enduro, uh, Make Hard Enduro Hard Again. Thank you Rich, very excited about that. I also agree with the sentiment. Um, and then, Jarrett from Saskatchewan, I believe, um, sent me this from his company, which is, he's got an orbital welding uh, company. If you guys don't know that, look this up, um, AFI Orbital Welding. It's fascinating. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not gonna show you, go look it up. Go to AFI Orbital Welding, check it out. He is Beverly Boys here on YouTube. So make sure you check that out. Maybe subscribe to his channel. I don't know. I haven't actually checked out his channel here on YouTube. So check it out. Subscribe. Let's get him over a thousand subscribers so you can like start monetizing and all that good stuff. Um, but the other thing that Jarrett sent was uh, this because <laughs> Avalanche beat the Oilers um, four games to zero, and it looks it looks like you win. Enjoy, Jarrett from the Beverly Boys. Thank you so much, Jarrett. I really appreciate it. Um, but the other thing I got, this one's actually I ordered and I'm very excited about. This is pretty much the last part of the build uh, for the new 300. Again, this is why I was so sad when I found out Leander was lying to me. But I think this is pretty much it other than doing suspension on it when it gets here. But, you know, that's, we got to get it. But check it out. Boom. From Decal Works, we got our stickies and we're going full retro, orange with purple and all the, anyway, got all our sponsor stuff on there. Thank you, Sean Murdoch at Decal Works. Guys, they don't actually totally sponsor me. Obviously, I get a deal because I'm a dealer, but um, I pay for these because they are a busy, busy company and I'm not big enough to get free <laughs> graphics. Although, I did get free graphics on the 125. But anyway, um... Uh, so I did buy these, but guys, if you need graphics of any kind, whether it just be number plates or um, numbers or whatever, please use Decal Works. They are amazing. They're fast. The proofs are great. It's anyway, I love them to death. Um, so anyway, very, very excited about that. Uh, obviously, it's gonna be a while before you get to install them, but that's okay. So first on the lift is this RMZ 450. We're doing a valve adjustment. So. Already got the tank and everything off. So now let's take the uh, valve cover off and we'll see what we got in there. All right, guys, gonna start with, let's see if we can't get a three into these intakes that's good all right guys so these intakes are going to be hard to check um with it at top dead center because right now it's a top dead center the lobes are up and out not putting any pressure on the valves but um the way it, this is oriented is making that hard so i'm just going to roll this until the intake cams now the lobes are pointing that way so I can get in there from this side and check. So let's see if we can. All right, that one's. 
so three thousandths goes no problem. Let's check for let's check it five thousandths. Because basically intake valves on modern four strokes should be four to six. So that's good. Five goes with just a little bit of drag, so that's good. I like that. Dude, I think we're gonna have to roll it around again. All right, so now we're gonna come in. An exhaust ought to be between six and eight, so we'll see if we can get a six in this side. Six goes on that one. All right, six goes on that one. So these valves are good to go. Uh, he just brought it in for a check, just a you know general maintenance, no big deal. Uh, one thing though, guys, let me show you is that air filter is looking pretty gross. It's not actually bad. You can still even see some of the blue greenish tinge from the oil, so it's not horrible. But part of the deal here at Highland Cycles is when we do a valve check or adjustment, I always clean and oil the air filter. So I'm gonna do that right now. Um, and we'll check and make sure there's no dust on the intake, which it doesn't look like there probably is. It looks like he's got plenty of oil on there. Then we'll put this thing back together and give him a ring and we'll move on to the next job. Oh, this is what Leroy does. Get her, Leroy. Get her. Get her. Get her. That's like a boy. <laughs> so, uh, next on the lift is this lovely YZ450, 2020, I believe. But I think I might have sadness. So this gentleman uh, is a wonderful, awesome dude, great customer. Anyway, good dude. Uh, bike's been acting up a little bit. This is the one, actually, I forgot to film it, but we ended up putting a new starter clutch in this because it was spinning. Anyway, it wasn't engaging the motor anyway. Um, and it had been getting hard to start, but we thought it was the starter clutch going out, and then it was, anyway. <sighs> Turns out, we think it's uh, something worse than that. I think maybe it needs a valve adjustment or something like that. So it's in here. We're going to do a valve adjustment. It might also get a fuel filter or other thing. But here is the sadness, guys. Another sadness of air filter situation. So if you look at this air filter, it does not look like it should. It should have a color to it. There is no color to that. That means it's probably bone dry. So we're going to take it out and ha, ha, that's a lot of dirt. That's an awful lot of dirt. Oh man. And I thought Eric knew better than to do that. In fact, I was 99.9% .9 sure that he was better, uh, knew better than to let an air filter be that dry. But here we go, guys. Probably another blown up motor. Um, it's, it runs, it ran, well, it doesn't, doesn't run right now. It doesn't really want to start. So uh, hopefully we can adjust the valves for now, get them through another weekend or so of riding, and then we're gonna have to order top end parts because it's definitely no good. That's a lot of dust on the back side of that filter and that like shouldn't anyway shouldn't be like that so guys air filter air filter air filter air filter maintenance please 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 maintain the air filter do it right uh, that way you don't have to come see me you don't have to end up on our schlog getting made fun of um yeah dig in see what we find all right guys so <laughs> i uh took the air filter out like i showed you it was all dusty bad um, and before I go any further, I just want to show you what I found when I took the screen off. That is really bad. That's like definitely top 10, probably top five worst air boxes I've seen that actually had an air filter in place. It just wasn't a <laughs> Whew. All right. So I think I'm, before I even go any further, I'm going to give this guy a call and let him know he needs a top end and we'll just get the parts coming because... There's no point in adjusting these valves. It's, <clears throat> everything in there is going to be scored or polished. <laughs> probably polished, honestly. It's really fine dust. It's like probably polished up really shiny on that cylinder, uh, making very little compression. So 
yeah, it's a bummer. But um, hopefully you guys learn. Hopefully someone out there will see this. They just got their first bike and they're going through our channel and checking out maintenance stuff. And hopefully this saves you from a motor being um, blown up and need to be rebuilt. So anyway, yeah, we'll get on to the next job. I'm not sure, like I said, I'm probably gonna park this thing until we get parts and then we can go deeper. Right on guys, uh, so we talked to this gentleman, we are getting a top end and everything. So make sure you subscribe to the old channel because we'll be doing a full top end on this YZ450, um, including also rebuilding the fuel pump because he wants to make sure it has fresh filters and everything in it. Um, and so we'll see exactly how bad that top end is. I'm thinking it's actually gonna be a lot better than it could be. But anyway, uh, next on my lift is my 125, the one deuce nickel. Um, I lean because I'm getting ready to sell a uh, fresh top end. You just saw the piston there. Um, brand new fresh top end. Actually a new RK Tech insert uh, that doesn't require any kind of race gas or anything like that because my last one was a little bit aggressive and if I took it down to three or four thousand feet I had to spike it with race gas. So this one's back to just pump gas everywhere from Moab all the way to 13,000 feet. Um, and then I'll include the other inserts with it obviously. Uh, but yeah, getting her ready to sell. I got brand new, well, I got the old plastics to put on it. They're a little scratched up, so they're not super fresh, but they're um, better than the ones that were on it, and it's gonna be ready to go. So if anybody here on the YouTube is interested in purchasing this, um, I'm asking $7,000 for it. Uh, it's gonna have, you know, everything on it. Bulletproof designs, radiator guards, bulletproof designs, uh, fork lug guards, system tech racing, uh, front and rear disc guards, um, uh, TM design, uh, chain guard, bulletproof design, swing arm guard, full TBT valving uh, in the forks and shock. We're doing, it's coming with the spring forks, not the air forks. Endure engineering guards, bulletproof designs levers, um, nitro moose front rear, V moto tires front and rear. Uh, they're not brand new, but they're awfully close. Uh, you can see they're really, really good. FMF turbine core uh, silencer and uh, FMF fatty um, pipe. Turbus guards, turbus skid plate. Uh, System Tech Racing brake cooler and brake reservoir cooler. Um, let's see, counter shocks on there. Uh, Mako 360 from XC Gear bar mount. And I think that's about it. So anyway, I'm gonna finish this thing up, get it fired up, and we'll move on to the next job. All right, guys, next up is I'm getting my kid down here working, getting some free labor out of him on this uh, 65, there you go, that's good. So now come around, push down more of it. Go ahead and pull it back out. Perfect, so push. So what I do, hang on guys, let me set you down. Uh, but it might be easier to come over on this side. I, I find it easier to kind of go like that and pull it. You had it in there the right way, so flip it around. All right, guys, next up on the lift, uh, first of all, my kid, you'll notice he's in different clothes. <laughs> he rode home, got changed, we're gonna go ride tonight, because tonight's Thursday, and that's the night we ride dirt bikes, and the plateau should be brilliant, because it looked like it rained up there today, but it's clearing up, so that's gonna be awesome. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. Uh, but next on the lift is this DRZ250. Uh, the Let's look at the work order, because this is kind of an interesting one. It says, uh, here we go. All right, so it says, was leaking gas, it seems to have sealed, uh, and then also burning a lot of oil. So uh, I just fired it up. It does start um, pretty well, no problem. And I was like, all right, so I'm gonna check the oil here in just a second. But the next thing I always check on these things, especially if there's any kind of question about oil burning or anything like that, is the air filter. I know we've been getting a lot of air filter stuff recently <laughs> on the vlog, uh, so uh, let's take a look and see what they've done. So you take a look in here, it looks kind of okay from here. This is a little bit of a worry, right? Cause that shouldn't be like that. But then you look in there and you can see, hang on. By the way, this kid's really good at air filter maintenance. He doesn't mess it up like a lot of people do. But anyway, uh, so we look in there and the wire is not even on the thing. So you want to go ahead and take that sucker out of there. So pretty dirty. 
Water. That's no big deal. This side, yeah, but let's take a look. It's here, watch out. Oil. Yeah, it's got oil. Here, watch out. Back up. Oh. Back up, son. Oh. <laughs> so, take a look in there. And. Can you start yeah, uh, but that's actually no toil, so hang on. Pull it off the cage and I'll show you how to do it. Um, it's not super dusty, which is good, um, but definitely some dust on that screen for sure. Uh, and I'm guessing the intake further in is dusty. So I think I know why it's burning oil. <laughs> All right, guys, so got the air filter cleaned on this. Uh, kid got that done. Uh, he's <laughs> not here. It's another day. I don't know if you guys know. Let me explain this whole schlog thing real quick to you. Um, I used to do these every day, and I would film uh, every day, everything that happened, and I would do a daily schlog. Um, and that was, honestly, it was a... A push to get enough subscribers to make this thing worth it this whole YouTube thing worth it and it totally worked um, we had a new schlog every day and it was awesome um, but it started to wear on my relationship with my kids and my wife uh, which I knew it would we we talked about it my wife and I talked about it how I was gonna do go hard for as long as I could and then have to back off and so I did I backed off and now it's a week um, you know it's a weekly thing now so anyway uh, now I just film every day a little bits here and there sometimes what everything and then compile it into separate videos specific videos and then a weekly video um, so anyway that's that that's that's how that all works so uh, kids gone now he's actually out riding his dirt bike um, with his brother and a friend uh, and it's so cool because they could ride from our house that just warms my heart uh, to move have moved where we did and they get to ride from the house and go ride anyway got that clean I'm gonna service this thing uh, and see how bad the oil is and all that stuff and then probably report back that he needs to top in because it's definitely burning oil. Compression is low. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, I haven't checked that yet, but it's low. So I know it needs a pit and the rings. Uh, it could need valves and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, um, so I'm gonna get to that here in a second. But um, it's been a while since I've filmed this uh, on the Schlag and uh, I figured I'll film... <laughs> Our buddy Mike <laughs> hit a log last night uh, on our Thursday night ride and caved that sucker in. So I'm laughing only because I do it all the time. So anyway, um, I think I've explained it all. I know I have, but anyway, let's go over it again real fast. So I use the uh, Mino Racing Products, MX Racing Products uh, kit that I got from eBay. I'm sure it's just Chinese. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Uh, it does not have the regulator on it because I have a, um, my filler attachment for my hose has a, you know, an amount, um, a gauge on it so I can tell how much goes in it. So anyway, you bolt that thing on there. Um, this end is honestly the critical in this end because there's usually a lip on the, the pipe. I don't have a pipe. Anyway, there's a lip. So this clamps in underneath that lip. So this is a mechanical thing. It can't come off, right? It, it um, as long as this is halfway tight, it can't just blow off. Now, you can have a failure in the metal or something like that, but it just can't slide off. This end, on the other hand, could, because this is just smooth. So, I really reef down on these. Um, you got to be careful not to, you know, bend the pipe, but if you go even on both sides, uh, the cutout in here is just right, so it won't bend the pipe. But really, really, really go hard on that, uh, and then tighten these down, and then... One thing I guess I haven't mentioned um, is that I always aim the ends away from me and other people. Now, I did have a video uh, with the molecule st standing at the end of one of these, and that was not good. I wasn't paying attention. We were filming, anyway, we were talking. I honestly just spaced it out. Um, and everybody who wants to yell at me for spacing out safety, I'm sure you've never done it yourself. But in general, uh, I like to aim that thing away so it doesn't you know if it does blow off it doesn't kill someone now if you want to be super safe you can get some safety wire wrap it around these and then come to this and then that would be a mechanical stop for it to not blow off but i found that if you really reef down on the wing nuts i've never had one blow off even with 80 psi that's the next thing i use between 60 and 80 kind of depends on the dip uh, if it's mild, dense little ones, I'll just do 60 because I know it's not going to take much. Well, this one, I'm going to put 80 in it. Um, I've tested it after I heated it up, 
I've only ever gained like 5 to 10 PSI. It doesn't go like way high. It doesn't go over 100. Um, at least mine haven't. So anyway, let's do this. I'll film it in time lapse because it's super cool looking. <laughs> Turned out pretty good. Uh, this pipe's been, we've already blown this one out once or twice. Um, so I'm not going to go crazy trying to make it perfect. Uh, it's just getting that huge dent out of there. So there we go. Um, and I get a lot of people asking what we charge. Um, I'm just going to charge 20 bucks for that. Like, because again, I'm not bringing it back to new like the guys at Pacific Crest. They do, they try to do a really good job of like, making the thing look brand new. I'm not gonna do that. Most of my customers don't want that. Um, they just want it relatively straight, so it works good. So anyway, there we go. Uh, now we'll get back over here. I'll bring you guys in when I find anything else um, super interesting on this uh, DRZ250. All right, guys, drain the oil. Uh, there's plenty of it. It is definitely black. Uh, quick tech tip, change your oil before it gets that dark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I feel like a smart ass today. Um, but yeah, that's uh, at least there seems to be enough oil in it, so that's good. Um, we'll pop the oil filter off here. Uh, I just replaced the uh, spark plug, and while I was doing that, I checked the compression with a, just a normal compression tester, and it came up at like 150 pounds, which is actually like not terrible uh, for this little motor. So. I don't know. I mean, it, the air filter situation is not good. It's probably polished up a little bit in there, but it seems like the valves are sealing again, just based on the compression reading. I haven't taken that apart. I don't think he really wants me to spend too much money if we don't have to, unless we're going to go through, you know, and do a top end. So uh, I'm going to get the oil changed, um, filter changed, get the air filter reinstalled, and then go ride the thing and see how it feels. Um, you know, it's rough, but uh, if it runs and starts and it's all good, I mean, I don't know. It, it's kind of one of those bikes. It's not a big performance bike anyway. It's not really intended to do anything crazy. So if we can get it to where it's reliable enough and not burning too much oil, I mean, I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, just let it rip uh, until it gets to the point where you rebuild it. So anyway, we get that done, take it for a test ride, and I'll report back in. All right, guys, so I've got the DRZ all done. Uh, runs pretty good, really. Um, seems like everything's okay. Forks are leaking a little bit. Um, you know, it's it's rough. It's uh, the compression. Is, uh, I think I already mentioned 150 PSI, which is actually pretty good considering the air filter wasn't seated and probably sucked a bunch of dirt. Um, but honestly, you know, bike seems to be all right, especially I think this guy just wants to kind of cruise around on it. So I think we're going to recommend that he just go ahead and cruise around on it uh, for now. Uh, if it ever gets uh, any worse, you keep an eye on the oil burning. If it gets worse, then, you know, we'll rebuild the thing and go from there. So uh, anyway, guys, I got a mail time that I'm pretty excited to show you guys about. But it's a textile product, so we're going to come up front where I, so I won't get it all super dirty. So, um... Big news, well, I don't know how big it is. Anyway, news. I'm gonna be working uh, with Adam Nitza, who's got his YouTube channels called Adam Does Dirt Bikes. And if you guys haven't checked him out, you really, really need to. Um, he's this great kid uh, who has been uh, working really hard. He's been racing the Western, or actually, maybe the whole. Anyway, he's been racing the hard enduro circuit here in the United States. He started off in the C-Class, way in the back of the C-Class and struggle, struggle, struggle. But right now, currently, he is leading the C-Class uh, in the Hard Enduro Series uh, this year, and I'm so stoked. Uh, we're friends through a mutual friend, Robbie Noyles, who, if you guys have been paying attention to this um, channel for very long, you know Robbie is a huge, huge supporter of a channel in our shop. And Robbie got a hold of me and said, hey, Adam needs some help. I, would you be interested? And I said, absolutely. I would love to help Adam out. Um, so he's going to be coming over here soon and we're going to be re rebuilding his shock and I'm going to be teaching him how to do that. So you guys should definitely subscribe if you haven't yet because uh, we're going to be making a video of me teaching him which might be better than my normal videos because it's actually going to be a human that doesn't necessarily understand it and we're going to be 
working together to build this shock, and I think it might even be better instruction than my normal video, so definitely stay tuned for that. But one of the things, um, you know, to support a guy and to get our name out there, I decided that we needed to do something cool, um, and I'm really excited about this. We have our own jerseys, which <laughs> I think are pretty freaking rad. How cool is that? Uh, company Canvas um, is super cool. They do custom jerseys. Obviously, you gotta have their name on it um, as part of the deal. Uh, I don't know, maybe we could talk to them and if you gave them a little bit more money, maybe they would uh, let you have it without their name on it. But it's pretty sweet. Blank on the back so we can hopefully get Adam's name on it. Um, this is a large, so seems like pretty big, um, but that's good. You want your, I like my jersey to be baggy. It's really nice um, nylon material. Seems like it's going to hold up really good. I like the collar. Looks comfy. Pretty stoked. The other thing that I thought was really cool is I sent them our logo. I, you know, drew it up on their website. Um, put the logo, upload the logo, and they sent me an email back right away asking if I wanted the red over here that originally was a brighter red, like more like red, white, and blue, um, like the, the flag, if they wanted to match this or to make this, you know, whatever, to make these colors the same, whether I either have the color here match this or have this match the other one. Anyway, uh, I said I wanted it to be the same as our logo, so they did. I think they turned out freaking awesome. Let me know what you think below. Also, let me know if you'd ever be interested in one of these. They're pretty pricey. Um, I think at the current number, we did uh, four of them. Two of them are going to go to Adam, and then the other two are for me and someone else. Um, probably one of my kids or something like that, or maybe it's a spare for me. But um, they're right now, they're like 85 bucks. They're pretty pricey, uh, but they are super rad. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm really happy. I think, though, if you do more, obviously the price can come down. Anyway, I'm pretty excited about it, guys. Let's get back to another job. Really, really stoked. All right, guys. So it's Friday in Schlag World, and uh, I have way too much stuff to do to my own bikes to be doing it during the workday and too many things for customers. So we're going to stay late, and one of the things I like to use to stay late is this Leading Edge Supplement Severe Clear. Um, it really is good. I love coffee and I drink coffee all day, um, but it's hot out and I don't have any iced coffee right now. And honestly, sometimes switching it up uh, is better. And I don't, I freaking hate uh, Red Bull and Monster and all that stuff. It's just so much sugar in it. It's just, I'm too old for that. <laughs> uh, this stuff is awesome. Like I said, no sugar. Um, and it tastes great and it absolutely like woo, wakes me up so um let's go back out and see what i'm doing tonight um also guys shameless commercial if you guys want to order some leading edge supplement stuff go to leadingedgesupps.com and use code highland to save money um so tonight working on the bike um first of all i just cannot tell you how good this motorcycle is it's just so good um God, I love it. Anyway, uh, I have been kind of going through it. After that nasty mud race in uh, Monticello, I've figured lots of things are going to be jacked up. Well, actually, amazingly enough, the fork seals seem to be okay. Um, I just took the shock off, checked the shock bearing, both the lower um, hind joint down here and the one on the upper shock. Check the link or the swing arm bearings; they all seem to be good. But my wheel bearings, both front and rear, are junk. Um, so we're going to replace those tonight. Uh, also, I'm going to be checking my steering head bearings. They felt pretty good. Uh, just rolling it in here, kind of moving around. But I'm going to put it up on a stand when I go to pull the wheel, um, the front wheel off, uh, and check those. Make sure they're moving clean and good. Uh, then uh, I'll probably change the oil. Uh, get that done. This is probably time, I think, now. And uh, yeah, then it'll be ready to go. This thing has been brilliant. It's been 450 hours on this motorcycle, and it has been. So good. I hope I can get that kind of time out of the new one when it shows up. Um, also, guys, if you're new here and you're just watching this for the first time, I am getting a 2023 300XC um, probably in September. 
Um, you guys might be watching this after I already have it, I don't know, but um, uh, I'm a little ways off still on getting it. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I hope it holds up as good as this thing. All right, guys, got the front wheel bearings done. They're all nice and happy now. Um, it looks like my brake rotor may be a little bit bent. <laughs> Classic. I run an S uh, System Tech Racing front disc guard. Again, it's not completely bomber um, as far as taking side shots, uh, but it is crazy, crazy strong and it's super light. And I love the fact that this leading edge is plastic. So it slides <clears throat> if you get it hung up on something or if you or it's not, well, actually it won't get hung up on something. If you hit a rock and it wants to bind up on aluminum, it'll just slide off of this. Uh, but now it's time to check those steering head bearings. And honestly, all I do is just kind of move it back and forth. Make sure it moves nice and easy. Like it just wants to fall like that. Either direction, um, obviously it's gonna wanna fall to the other side more because the chainsaw uh, is more off to the right than the left. But even with the left, it'll like that. Uh, and then to make sure it's not too loose, I'm gonna pull, uh, let me set you guys down. I wanna take it and I wanna pull like this back and forth and like push on the forks back and forth this way make sure there's no give this way um i probably need to take that steering uh stem apart and grease it uh i did it uh it's not not even been a year um i don't know but i do wash the bike a lot and i get it pretty gnarly muddy whatever i'm sure i need to take it off but i'm not going to do it right now because i have the chainsaw mount on there and to take all that off just to do that seems ridiculous especially since the bearings feel perfect like they feel like they're moving just like they're supposed to move uh, it's not causing any kind of issue with performance so uh right on i think i'm done uh it's still light outside but it's late um for me at least getting home i gotta get home to the kids hang out with them hang out with the wife and uh, do cool stuff and we'll get on to the next job tomorrow all right guys uh so sorry there isn't another job in this week's log um the gentleman came uh, with a beta for me to reject and he ended up hanging out and talking the whole time so i didn't film because not a lot of people love that but i have a quick story time it was pretty cool he's a gentleman who um i had seen i think almost 12 years ago uh, was in here for fork springs and seals on a 990 ktm and it was the time when i had my leg in a cast and my buddy jeff scott was here helping me and it was awesome we talked about the whole thing uh, and about how I was all laid up. <laughs> and anyway, it was awesome. We had a really great time. It was super fun catching up. Uh, he's got a Beta 300. We just rejetted it. Uh, quick jetting note. Uh, 160 main jet. Stock needle in the number two position. Uh, stock pilot jet. And running a uh, the air screw out one and a half. Seems like it's going to work really, really good for him. So anyway, if anybody needs to know, it's a 2021 300RR. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end the slog here, but I have to say a huge thank you to Don Rhodes, who just brought these in, these absolutely beautiful MSR, um, jacket and pants, actual Gore-Tex MSR freaking rad enduro jacket and pants. Don, thank you so much. They are in mint condition and I am, whoa, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know if I want to wear them. I'll probably just hang them up or I'll wear them out like out to dinner with my wife. Wife, when I want to look good, uh, like that, and my red boots would be so rad. Anyway, who wants to see a video of me riding around in that with red boots? Do it. I don't know. Maybe some cool old. I don't know what to do. You guys come up with an idea for a sweet video using this stuff. I want to hear from you guys. Comment down below what you think would be a cool video to do using that gear on whatever. Anyway, all right, guys. I love you so much. I gotta go. It is the end of the schlog, the end of the week. And now I have a boatload of work to do at the new house. I gotta cut some trees down and a bunch of, anyway. So I love you. I hope you get out and spread the gospel of two wheels. And I desperately hope that what we're doing here is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes. <laughs>